Crazy how niggas really get a gut from drinking lean. I never understood why niggas drunk lean. Yeah. Have you ever tried it? Nah, like so I've tried a variety of different drugs over the time of my life, but drinking some Yeah, me shit, too, but I never tried some that. Shit out of a cup that you know got you all fucked up and like if a blunt can't get me there. I don't need it. Yeah, you know, ecstasy is a different type of vibe. Like I said, I caught that at the kind of the beginning of the wave. At the very beginning. Yeah, I only like dropped like ecstasy said, once. My nigga, my cousin, was the main supplier provider of the wave. And, um, uh, you know, like we was, he was giving me so many of them shits that it's just it was like multivitamins, nigga. I was coming to work because those shits had you <laughs> in your feelings, like. Look, how, how Sang will be in his feelings, goddamn. I was at work one day. I was there, <laughs> talking with this show. I was like, I said, some shit. No, I, no, I wasn't talking to the show. I talked to like one of my guy coworkers or whatever. I was like, I, I really like that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, he was like, nah, I feel you, bro. Like, you know, <laughs> he already knew. He already knew what it was. I feel you, man. You know what I'm saying? Just. You know, you you know you're gonna be all right. You know, you go go get you something to drink, man. You know, I know you're thirsty, cause that XC <laughs> have you thirsty than a motherfucker. As a side <laughs> effect, some niggas would drink that orange juice, the acid orange juice would enhance the whole further experience, the vibe, or whatever. But you know, a shorty rub you on your arm or whatever, you be feeling like ooh, <laughs> nigga feeling like you about to bust now. Ooh. I remember when I dropped it, I was I was at a concert. I just kept I just kept pulling up on that water fountain. Yeah, yeah. But that, that orange juice was the that was that real joint that went with it. Like, yeah, it does the same thing in uh hallucinogenics. So like the first time I even took a hallucinogens. A, um a X pill, whatever. So I was working at a spot, a law firm, I just leave it at that. A couple of the attorneys who were young and hip, uh, brought me, you know, to the to their spot in the Virginia Highlands because um, at work, they was like, we already know you a crazy cat. If we hang out with you, it's going to be some crazy times. So after talking about that shit for like a couple of months, they finally, you know, scooped me up after work, went to their crib. We there. I'm in the living room. These niggas got the little kid. They got a couple of little jars on the coffee table. One had that that white in it. Another jar had dro, you know, that good weed or whatever. So yeah, I, you know, they you know brought out some rolling papers or whatever. So I'm rolling up so I can smoke this weed, and they hitting the powder like boom, 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 boom. So then they talk about they guy who coming, and this guy when he comes then. Shit about to be all the way lit. So I'm like, all right, cool, whatever. Cause I didn't have no expectation other than to chill with these, you know, white attorneys, maybe um smoke with them, and then maybe go home or yeah. stop at some kind of lounge by myself and then, you know, catch a cab home or some shit, since that was the thing at that time. Yeah. This white boy come in looking like Fonzie from Happy Days. Italian <laughs> boy with the leather jacket, you know, kind of cool swag aura. <laughs> this nigga came in with about five bad shorties. I'm about two of them was black, two of them was white. I forgot what the other one was, but they were all like doms. And everybody got excited when this nigga came in. And then he, <laughs> saw, he was like, how many you need? How many you need? How many he need? Or whatever. And attorneys, they buying whatever amount you know, X for each of them. And then they asked me, do I want one? I'm like, what the fuck is this? So when they said what it was at that time, my cousin, he just started kind of doing his thing with it too. But I didn't trust it because me and my cousin, as cool as we could be in certain times, other times we like oil and water, you know what I'm saying? 
So it was is that the one that robbed you? No, 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 no. This is uh, my cousin Mike Ye. Oh, okay. Where you know down here in Atlanta. So, uh, they get one for me, or whatever, and then everybody popping the, the the beans or pills or whatever. So they talk about what where they gonna go, what club, and I'm like, how do I know this shit gonna kick in? And they like, just trust us, you know what I'm saying? You gonna know when it kick in. So we we in the we we like two trucks deep, like two Yukon trucks deep, head into whatever club to, or or you know the white people at that time, the rave. We go into the rave joint. So all I know is we get there. I done got like four or five phone numbers, and I'm dancing with this shorty, like grinding on her, dancing up, you know, all up on her. And then one of the attorneys was like, it done kicked in. <laughs> and I look, nigga, we ain't even getting in the club yet. I'm on the line outside to get in the spot. And I done did all of this crazy shit <laughs> before we even went in the rave. So that shit was a crazy night because, yeah, we get in the rave. And then that's when they was like, okay, boom. You're going to need this orange juice to keep you kind of keep everything going. And then um, this one joint. So if you're familiar with Atlanta, there's a, a part of Atlanta known as um, Emory or Virginia Highlands where Emory University is, where you got the pre-med students, shorties that's about to be doctors and lawyers and shit. Basically the more upscale joints that's about to be somebody type joints. So uh, I'm dancing with the shorty and we grinding. And then that's when that shit really kicked into like a whole other level. It felt like we was damn near blazing and we just <laughs> dancing, grinding on each other. The music is like, yeah. oosh, oosh, oosh. And I'm here moving slow, grinding on it like it's some Jamaican music, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that shit was crazy. But, um, uh, that shit was a whole crazy vibe, nigga. All I know is a boyfriend, I guess that was a boyfriend, because this nigga standing like mere centimeters away from us, looking at him like, what are you doing? And she's like, I'm dancing with Dre. <laughs> <laughs> I was up there like, yo. And then, yeah, that shit was crazy. Like, we hung out like three more times where her boyfriend came along and everything. Like, this nigga was lame of the year. And I was just on some not giving a fuck nigga of the year shit because, like, I swear, like, our next couple of dates, quote unquote, it was me, her, her boyfriend, but this nigga sat at another table looking tight than a motherfucker. And by, like, date three, it was just me and her, and then that nigga was out of there. I was like, yeah, that shit crazy. 